All right, so I don't own a Detolf because um, this was where it would be in my living room. My living room's not very big, and it's already occupied by a bunch of stuff. And I guess just one fit. But anyway, I get lucky because in this particular house, which was built in the um, early 1900s, they this is supposed to be a dining room. So what they would do is build this um, in wall type of uh of uh you know storage compartment i guess for dishes or you know china or fine wear that type of stuff so you know they could have stuff down here and this was actually a dining room as you can see this is i believe the original chandelier i don't know but this is supposed to be a dining room but instead it is our living room um so anyway this is where i keep um most of my loose figures and, and, and stuff that's on display. So I guess, real quick from the bottom, <clears throat> I kind of split it up between Avengers and X-Men, somewhat. I mean, it's as stuff comes in, I'll just kind of fit it in at times, and sometimes I have to start kind of going way back there. Find as much space. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing a hand. I just keep dreading getting that Wolverine, but I'm going to have to get it eventually. So yeah, I mean, again, I, I open most of my legends and put them on display. And now with this whole toy photography, I also, you know, I'm trying to get into more into ACBA. <clears throat> so this is my collection. I'm happy with my collection. You know, I don't have everything. There's certain pieces that I'm definitely missing that I wish I had. Um, but you know. For the most part, I'm definitely um, happy with what I do have. That cap and Nick Fury, I want to eventually open up. Um, some Daredevils kind of got stuck back there. And then the second shelf is... Man, it's just a mixture of a bunch of stuff. I like to collect a lot of different type of... Um, I like Marvel, but but within that, it's not just Legends. I like to get... So back here, you know, just the, the Pit figure. Um, three recently purchased um, scrolls, and I, I, I kind of like those figures. They're cool. Um, and then I just have some random stuff, you know, some Wolverines. And I have, like, a, the figure factory back there. Unmasked. This was like a hidden, a hidden one in that collection. But those crates that I use for the dioramas, that's you know, these are the figures that you build. Um, there's a few more on the shelf, but and just some random Wolverines. And then thing, man, I'm a big fan of thing. I've always liked them as a superhero. <clears throat> Obviously, how else would you like the thing? But um, I guess what I meant to say more is that I always liked kind of his backstory and. Uh, where he grew up, and it was similar to my background, so it was kind of something I can relate to. I wasn't in any gangs or anything like that, but surrounded by it. So the thing with somebody, I can always kind of um, uh, read that story and feel like, ah, right, cool, cool, they, they, they're they writing a little bit about some of those um, situations. And there's just some random stuff. This storm actually isn't part of that build, build a series, not a build a series, but that build a set um, figure factory those little brown crates um, but that spider-man was as was the blade and doc ock so I think it was four. Oh, and then the daredevils yeah those two daredevils if you can see them real good I got the blind box was the um, yellow and then the other one was the red so you would have to kind of build them um, piece by piece so here again, just some random Spider-Man stuff, just from different type of sets, and um, not everything's articulate. Some of it's just kind of the statue variety, and um, there's some of the stuff, random stuff back there, some Avenger, Avenger stuff. Those real little mini Iron Man and Hulk. So that's the second shelf, um, and then a few of the um, the Marvel universe 
um, three packs and, and whatnot. Those also on the back wall there. Um, some of the X Men joints. And then going on to the fourth shelf, the GI Joes, which is kind of cool. What why I really love these GI Joes is because these were these were actually my son. He is now 15 years old. So when these um, came out, he was into them. So I'd go to Toys R Us and get him one and get myself the same one. And I wouldn't open it. Um, because he'd open it, so he'd open his. So I'm just you know keeping mine sealed or whatever. And then he was good about saving the weapons and um. So I, I don't, because my sealed ones are put away, I don't know what weapons belong to who. But I have most of these already, um, just in sealed packages. A couple of the vehicles. That red joint there, the Viper, the newest one is dope. Um, it does a lot of shit. It's, it's, it's cool. And, and then the Polar one, I, I'm always partial to anything Polar, G.I. Joe or Star Wars. or I don't know, I've always liked bomber coats and... <clears throat> boots and shit I guess just from growing up in Boston but anyway so all these figures here were my sons so he kept them together and I put them out and it's a pretty decent collection um, and so I, I, I'm proud to display them because they were his he played with them once some of them are a little bit more loose and and so forth but that's what's supposed to happen with toys so it's cool um, some random heads I, I need to put those away and then some of the Transformers. And again, I like to collect just here and there. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't. I guess I don't just take a, a, a particular series unless I really like it and, and go all out and get everything that's being released for that series. It's just, I just don't have the, the loot to do that. So I'll just pick up random things here and there from different collections. And, some, you know, sometimes open them, sometimes leave them sealed to eventually open them. Um... Some that I probably never open. I don't know. Like that hound, that updated hound is a dope transformer right there. Um, robot and GP looks real good. Um, my favorite Cobra. Oh my fault. With the silver shield, the silver face plate. I mean, dope. Um, yeah, so just again, random. Figurine type joints and um, transformable joints and that weird sound wave. Um, and then the last, the last shelf is just again more probably more random. So let me see if I can move the light around. More random stuff. Um, although I do kind of like my. They don't get a lot, these don't get a lot of love, but the famous covers, um, kind of the Mego looking clothed, you know, action figures. You can kind of see uh, Cyclops. So kind of in that mold, um, you know. So I have a pretty deep collection, but you can find them pretty cheap. You can still find it for like eight or nine bucks. Uh, I just think they're dope. Um, I, I need to take some out and just flick them, but I haven't in a while. And some more of those um, universe sets and. Cobra Rattler. Got a few years back for Christmas. And then this is probably one of my favorite. Um, there goes Lionel. One of my favorite parts of my collection is the um, the Transformers, um, the commemorative series um, of the original Transformers. And, and one of the reasons I like them because they were priced originally at twenty nine ninety nine. I remember seeing them and thinking, "Yo, that's crazy! I ain't paying thirty bucks." Cause they're kind of small now. When I was younger, they were bigger in my mind, I guess, in my hands. Now they're kind of tiny. I'm like, "That's a little bit of plastic for thirty bucks." Maybe you know, maybe I'm just being cheap. But eventually, almost every single one went on sale. Some as low as three dollars and ninety nine cents. So that's like the crown jewel of my collection. Most of these are you know priced on eBay for like forty fifty bucks. So. I guess if I ever sold them, I'd definitely make a good little little come up. But I probably never, I never will. It's not even a probably. I just, these have been with me for a long time. They'll stay with me um, as long as I'm collecting, which has been a long time now. So I can't see them going anywhere. Um, yeah, my Marvel Legends. Um, I like that set. That's the, the Young Avengers. I got it pretty cheap in, in KB in New Hampshire. Every time I go to New, North Conway, New Hampshire... 
they have these outlets and they used to have KB then I always get some good that's actually how I got the pit because each of the pieces um, Rip Claw and Madman and all them was like five dollars and ninety eight cents and then buy two get one free so I spent twenty four bucks and, and got all the figures plus pit so that was a good deal so yeah man I love deals but anyway so this is kind of my um you know where my where my collection is is that you know and it's kind of cool because you know you can close the door and I mean maybe it doesn't keep it dust free but it definitely helps when you close um, both of the doors yeah and then this final finally my um my dials um yeah, I guess I guess I was I started to take pictures and I would take pictures over here on, my, on that desk and I'd have like a light box and I don't know man like the background I wasn't feeling the background so I said man I gotta I gotta and I was seeing other people display and they had like this you know crazy brick in the background I'm like what the f you know so I, you know I wanted to I wanted to, to kind of get into it so I guess I googled I, I YouTubed I YouTube or somebody had put something on Instagram I don't know how it happened, but one of the first videos I saw was this dude AJ Frost who had who had hooked up this like sewer scene that was amazing. Being it was all out of foam and shit, and I I was blown away. So I was like, yo, I need to find out a little bit about this this craft. So this is my um, after doing some research, this is what I came up with. So this here, the first one on the left, um, is the second one I I, I did, and this was. It's intended to be like a, a, a warehouse, so it's inside of a warehouse. So you drive through the, you know, through the roll down um, gate or roll up gate, and then you you know you come in here and then you unload or whatever. And this was kind of inside, so you can come up here and, and take a break, smoke a cigarette or whatever. Um, so that this was my my like my my second try at ever. You know, the first one I did was, it's it's in another room, I'll try to get it, but definitely this was leaps and bounds, and it was just trial and error. I mean, it's still not great. I could have done a little better on the black one. I mean, I, you can kind of see it, um, but I guess in the picture it's not showing up as much. Um, I was definitely happy with the floor. Um, kind of that scruffed up cement floor. And then it would lead out a door into an alleyway. That that's I don't have that. That I'm on display right now, and then this one's my newest one. Um, and this one is intended to be like a underground base of operations type of deal, where only a few select um, heroes have the password and the knowledge of where this is. And it's kind of like a you know a little weapons depot. Um, in that second compartment, I would put like an Iron Man armor, you know, because this was kind of Tony Stark's who built this, uh, his loot, you know, so this is kind of his space. Um, this fell. But so this was kind of the, the, the whole idea behind it um, was that on the ground base or whatever. So this is where I'm at. I'm not f completely finished with it because I need to um, do a couple couple things and I'm just waiting for some stuff to get delivered uh, in terms of accessories um, from Japan actually this this uh, table set and chair set um, that's gonna look real good in this in this diorama but basically the the, the goal of showing these more than anything um, was because a few people have been asking me how I how I close them up and and actually it's it's I built it because again I, I mean think about this is a pretty massive I mean it's only a f I believe it's a four foot table but um, you know like there's no if I was to leave it there there's no access to to that door or whatever so it's 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 pretty big so I, I can't I don't have the space to have a big ass diorama in the one twelve scale for six, you know six inch figures it, it would have been a lot smaller if it was for the Joes. Um, so I'm gonna attempt to take this apart with one hand, um, just to kind of show how easy it is. So let me strap the camera around my, my hand if I didn't have it, and to kind of show everybody um, how it comes apart. So first and foremost, they're they're tied in by these uh, 
these little hooks. And I basically, those, this is glue gun, glue gunned in. So when it, when it comes together, you, you're latching it pretty much um, and it's holding the wall in place. Um, and then this is all different pieces. You just heard the, the stairs fall. So I can, you know, the first thing I do is take the stairs down and it's made out of balsa wood so it's, it's real light. Um, and then the landing. And then I just put a couple of props, but you know, those are easily removed. Um, and then what I did is these are supposed to kind of go in a little bit deeper. Um, and I didn't put them too deep just because I knew I was going to take them apart. So, and there's nails there, so you got to be kind of cautious about that. Those are easily removed. And so is the... So what you have left is... You know, all, all of the, the stuff that's connected to the walls for the most part is, is it's gone. And what I did is I created this part and it's meant to just be slipped out. And this is just kind of a, you know, the railing. And I kind of put hinges on it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I have no idea why I did that. Because it really doesn't help. I guess it shrinks it. Uh, so it goes from, you know, a lot longer um, to folding it in half. So that's kind of cool. I'm not sure it helps much, but, um, and then this was just from a file cabinet deal I found at one of those little outlet stores, but, um, put, you know, just kept together with, um, zip tie. So basically the guts pretty much are out. Um, and so the next step is just unlatching. And then taking the wall off. And what I did actually is this um, foam foam board has these little ridges that, you know, kind of are right there. You can see them. And then what I did is I cut out at like an angle so that when it's in there, it, it's almost like a little puzzle. So it's not, it won't go from side to side. And it gives a pretty good stability. Like you can even pick it up. Um... You know, from the bottom, when it's all connected with everything in it and move it, the stairs will probably about fall out, but everything else pretty much is solid. Um, so that wall's about to fall. So you just take out the wall. And, you know, obviously when you're taking it out, it, it kind of... The piping is glue gun. Um, I have a little kind of a air vent and that's like balsa wood but that's kind of embedded in there um, and then I'll latch the other side of the wall that kind of collapses And then what's left is the floor. So at the end of it, you go from having, you know, something that's about, I think it's two, two, it's 25 inches tall, and I think two and a half feet wide. So it goes from that, and I'm just kind of put my, my foot there so you can kind of see to that. And I pretty much store that away in a plastic bag, um, in a plastic trash bag, and then I can just put it on, you know, for me in the front porch, the basement, whatever. It just, it collapses. It's gone. You know, it's just four four walls. Um, this one here is a little different. This was the newest one, so I was, you know, advancing and kind of adjusting. This one was not. And so this one is screwed on, but it's the same deal. You take the screws off the back, and um, it just comes apart. All right, man, so that's pretty much it. Um, dials and the collection, and I am out.